Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. In Moto 14.2, we now have the ability to embed crypto mats into our renders from Empath. If you don't know what a crypto mat is, it's a really simple way, in a nutshell, to embed mats for all of your materials into one big layered EXR 32-bit file. And it's really easy to set up. So here I've got this scene. I've got a bunch of assets from Quixel in here, and I've got one USD lizard from Digital Life 3D that I downloaded from Sketchfab. So Moto 14.2 can also import USDZ files now, which is a really nice feature. We also have a nice soloing feature, similar to soloing in After Effects, where I can control click on any of these items here. Let's say, let's do one of these rocks, and I can isolate that in the viewport. Now these are AK textures and the advanced viewport operates really quickly. I can also take a look at say the grass. So again, just holding control and clicking on the eyeball, I can take a look at the grass. And here we're looking at uh, stenciled grass in the viewport, the advanced viewport. Moto's Empath renderer can now render stencil maps. Previously you had to use a dissolve map, a stencil map renders two or three times as fast. So it's a really nice uh, feature upgrade there. And when you want to add a crypto mat to your scene, you just go over here to the shading menu and you add it via your render outputs. Now, if you take a look at this, I've got a couple of different render outputs going on here. I've got my regular final color output and you see I've added two additional ones, one with Intel denoising and one with Nvidia optics denoising. And so again, it's gonna save all of these into one very large 32-bit layered EXR file. I also have these three crypto mat outputs. You add these via the add layer button and under render outputs, crypto mat, and you'll want to add all three of these to the scene. Crypto mat, crypto mat coverage, and crypto mat ID. They'll work together to pass data back and forth and export a embedded mat into your layered EXR file. Once you're all set up there, go over to render. You want to do render animation. And again, you need to save this as a layered image. You want to do layered image, hit OK. And in your file requester, you want to pick a layered open EXR float 32-bit. It has to be in that format for the crypto mats to render correctly. So I've already rendered this out at 4K, and I'm going to pop over to After Effects and take a look at it. So here we are in After Effects, and After Effects does have native crypto mat support, the latest version. If you like to use Photoshop, there's a free crypto mat plugin by Fnord that will allow you to bring in images that have embedded crypto mats, and you can work in Photoshop. So I like to work in After Effects, so I'm going to do this demo here, and you'll see that we do have this comp at 32 bits per channel, which is, you know, we're working with floating point imagery, so let's make sure we're at 32 bits per channel. And first thing I'm going to do is dig in here and I'm going to pull out one of my denoised layers. So this is, if you remember, I had three final render outputs in Moto. One not denoised, I had an Intel denoised, and an also an NVIDIA Optics denoised layer. So you can see some of the noise in here. If I push a little further, you can kind of see a little bit of some speckles and things like that. So I'm going to come up here to the effect drop down and under 3D channel, I'm going to pick Extractor. And this will let me pick one of my rendered layers right here from this drop down. Now you'll notice this went dark, it's just viewing this in linear space now, we'll fix that in a second. So I can look at my crypto mat layers, but I'm not actually dealing with this in this manner. I don't deal with crypto mats data directly. I'll show you how you do that in a second. I'm just gonna pick my final color output Intel or my final color output optics layers. And so I like Intel denoising, so I'm gonna click the Intel denoising layer. And here we've got the Intel denoise layer visible. And to get the gamma correct, I'm going to add another filter under Utility. I'm going to add HDR Compander. I'm going to bump my gamma back up to 2.2, and we're back where we want to be. And you can see those speckles are all gone there because the Intel denoiser is, frankly, pretty astounding. So, okay, here's our shot. Now let's dig into Cryptomat. I'm going to duplicate this layer, just Control-D, and I'm going to come up here under Effect, and I'm going to pick 3D Channel. Crypto mat right there. And what's going to happen is you're going to see this image change to this sort of false colored image. And this is our, our all these colors represent our mats. And you'll see our mouse pointer changed a little bit. And I've got a different kind of pointer here. And I can select my mats for all my materials in the scene just by clicking. So I had a material on the rock. I could just click that right there. If I want to add this other rock, I just press con uh, shift and you see the little plus sign. I can add that rock. And I can press control to remove that rock. And over here, you'll see the output is set to colors, and I can change that to matted RGBA. So I click matted RGBA, and I just isolate that image. There's my rock, all matted out. Or I could look at the mat only if I want to use the mat for an effect or something like that. So let's go back to matted RGBA. And one of the things with using these scanned images is they 
look nice, but they don't all come from the same place. So for instance, my rock does not come from the same place as my dirt, right? This dirt was some sort of desert dirt and this rock was probably by a volcano. So I need, need to do a little bit of color correction on there. This back rock is sort of nice and reddish and sort of matches the dirt, but this one's got a lot of yellow and green in it. So I'm going to try to get rid of that with some color correction. So up here under effect, we'll go to color correction and I like to use Lumetri, so we'll just use Lumetri. And then I will look at my color wheels. I'm just going to scooch this uh, over just a tad. And then I'm going to take my color wheel here and drag away from this green and more up into the, the red. Same with the midtones. And kind of get that rock more red looking. So if I turn this off, you see the difference, sort of greenish rock. Kind of reddish rock, maybe a little too purple there, but fine for demo purposes. Okay, so these back rocks are also looking a little out of place, right? They would be covered with dust from this sort of reddish ground. So let's deal with those. So I'm just going to duplicate that layer again. I'm going to look at my crypto mat and I'm going to actually, why don't I reset my color correction on it? And so I'm just, I'll deal with this in a second because the color correction is going to be slightly different than what I did for this boulder. And let's turn our crypto mat to colors. So I'm just gonna click on my back rocks there and select that mat. And again, you don't have to be in this mode to click. You can click, you know, whichever mode you're in, but it sometimes is helpful just to view the, the mat colors there. Go back to matted RGBA. You see, we're just dealing with those rocks now. So let's add a little bit of color correction to those. So again, I'm just gonna kind of drag them in the warm direction, make them look a little more deserty in the midtones there. A little bit in the shadows, a little more yellow, a little more red. And maybe just a tad in the highlights. Again, a little goes a long way. There's my ground, there's my rocks, a little too purpley, but good enough, I think. Okay, last but not least, let's bump up uh, the saturation of these little plants down here at the bottom, this little ground cover, these little guys here that are replicated across these rocks. You see these little fuzzies on, on these rocks. These are also little replicators that I set up in Moto. But let's just, uh, let's keep it simple. Let's do the ground um, cover and maybe these yellow flowers. So again, I duplicated this. I'm gonna reset my color correction. I'm going to, I'm just gonna pick my, select the crypto mat effect here. And again, you see my mouse pointer change in the viewport. And I'm going to click my, let's just I'll isolate this so you can see how this works. Oh, not gonna isolate it, I can't see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna click uh, the little clover layer there. And I'm going to hold the plus key and click um, my, um, yellow flowers there. Now if I isolate, you can see I've got the flowers and the clover layer. And yeah, let's just pump up the vibrance maybe on those. We'll go to creative and so maybe bump up the saturation to 115 or so and the uh, vibrance to, I don't know, just crank up to like 50 to kind of really get that yellow to show. So take a look. On, off. Those greens could be a little bit better, a little bit brighter on these guys. So maybe uh, go to my color wheels here and, and bring out my greens a little more. And maybe bring this up to like 70 or so. I'm going to tweak this forever. I'm just sort of going to overcrank everything so we get a big, big change. Okay, so here's my crypto matte color corrected scene or color corrected scene using... Crypto mats, and let me just uh, change this to fit up to 100%. Maybe that'll work the best. And if you can see, when I click off these layers, click off the greens and click off the back and click off that front rock, quite a bit different. In fact, if I look at this um, scene over here, which is the original scene, and I just drag this uh, original comp on top, we can then maybe just do a little AB mask on there. So let me grab that original one, just throw it on top of everything. Well, and before I do that, actually, why don't I just do one little adjustment layer. So right click and do a new adjustment layer. And I'm gonna add a Lumetri to this layer as well. And then I'm just going to do some basic correction on this and, and knock down the shadows just a tad for some contrast and bring up this exposure just, just a little bit, maybe 0.25 or so. And why don't we warm it up a little bit with some color temperature, make it look a little more sunny and deserty maybe not that much <laughs> it's just fine okay now we'll get a bit better idea of the difference between these two images just see if i can go and uh, turn on the original here 
and then I will draw a mat between the two maybe just something like whoops not a shape let's make a mask something like that so you can see the difference and then uh, I will go 100% and full screen and we can take a peek so quite a bit of difference between the original one and the uh, one we color corrected with crypto mat let's scooch this this way maybe so this rock's the same. This rock's much more vibrant. The greens and yellows are much more vibrant. And, you know, the back matches the uh, sort of dirt a little more. So there's just, you know, super useful to have all these mats baked into a single image uh, by just adding the crypto mat outputs to your uh, shader tree. Yum.